addition to the family. And buy Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. From the Kingdom in Seattle, Washington, we are getting ready now for the second game here on our Final Four Saturday. This one, of course, will match the Kentucky Wildcats, coached by Joe B. Hall, against John Thompson, Georgetown Hoyas. An early key to the game, something to watch for. How well will Kentucky be able to handle the relentless full-court pressure applied by Georgetown? Let's send you over now to the men who are going to call the action, Gary Bender and Billy Packer. Gary? Okay, Brett, they say about Patrick Ewing that he plays every game like it's his last. He's a warrior. He really is, Gary, the ultimate warrior, a great team player, has tremendous leadership qualities on the court. Their ball club goes to him defensively. He's the guy that stops everything on the other end when they go into pressure. And he's a very much underrated offensive player, too, with good hands, a lot of power moves inside. Dickie Beal, the senior coming back from knee problems, he puts him in overdrive. Joby Hall says he's given us great confidence. Well, he does. He gives that team a great chemistry that they didn't have earlier in the year without him. Stability in the backcourt. He's got the quickness to beat the press, and that's going to be the key to the game today. Kentucky and Georgetown, the winner to meet Houston for the championship on Monday night. We'll be back in the lineups in a moment. For Georgetown and Kentucky, and let's go to Frank Fallon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Kingdom for today's NCAA championship semifinal between the Hoyas of Georgetown University and the Wildcats of the University of Kentucky. Now, let's meet the starting lineups. For Georgetown and forward, a 6'5 sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland, number 40, David Wingate. For Kentucky and forward, a 7-1 senior from Lebanon, Pennsylvania, number 31, Sam Boyd. For Georgetown at forward, a 6-11 junior from Suitland, Maryland, number 52, Ralph Dalton. For Kentucky at forward, a 6-8 sophomore from Roberta, Georgia, number 34, Kenny Walker. For Georgetown at center, a seven-foot junior from Cambridge, Massachusetts, number 33, Patrick Ewing. For Kentucky at center, a 6'11 senior from Lexington, Kentucky, number 54, Melvin Turpin. For Georgetown at guard, a 6'1 sophomore from Reston, Virginia, number 30, Michael Jackson. For Kentucky at guard, a 6'5 senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, number 20, Jim Master. For Georgetown, a guard, a 6'5 senior from the Bronx, New York, number 20, Fred Brown. And for Kentucky, a guard, a 5'11 senior from Covington, Kentucky, number 11, Dickie Beal. And introducing the head coaches for Georgetown in his 12th season, John Thompson. For Kentucky in his 17th season, Joe B. Hall. Kentucky and Georgetown, the officials. We have Ron Spittler from Hutchinson, Kansas, Mike Tanko from Dallas, Texas, and Booker Turner from Los Angeles. How these teams got here? Well, this Kentucky team ended up playing at home at Lexington. There's Georgetown first, SMU. Very narrow escape against Dave Bliss's team. Then they defeated Jerry Tarkanian, the Cinderella team, Dayton. And on the other hand, BYU, Louisville, and Lexington, and beat Illinois in that Mideast Regional Final. And we had a coin flip before this game because both clubs came in here as the number one seeds from their respective regions. The coin flip was won by Kentucky. They're the home team, and then White. And Bowie gets the jump. Vicky Beal. And you see that, Gary, that's kind of funny. Goes all the way back to 1922. 1-0 record. The score was 22 to 23 or something in those range. Kenny Walker, sophomore. Dickie Beal wants to start him out and does. Good job by Dickie Beal to recognize right away that the zone was packed in. He took his jumper when it was available. Last 13 games, he's averaged over 10 points, way above his seasonal average of six. After he's doing, he had to change the shot. Rebound inside, follow, rejected. 
Red Brown shot was rejected inside. Not a good idea by Freddie Brown to put that shot up. And you were right, Gary. Patrick Ewing kind of lost control of the ball, and I was surprised the shot was as close as it was. And Boyd picks it out to Master. Master's been shooting much better of his late since the Southeastern Conference tourney. Jim Master's got to aggressively look for that jump shot early in his ball game. He is a great kill shooter. Beal again. This time, rebound clear by Dalton. Dalton, big, strong, 6'11 junior. Great man to man by Kentucky. And there's a traveling call on David Wingate, who went through the lane area. That will give it back to Kentucky. That'll be an interesting matchup. Kenny Walker's got all his quickness, and Wingate is a guy that really can handle the ball well on the move. A slashing offensive player. Both these teams outstanding defensively. Sam Bowie, who's come on strong as of late. He's about 80% from coming back from that stress fracture of his shin bone. Georgetown's showing just soft pressure right now. There's Master, the shot you were talking about. Right. He aggressively looks at the basket. He'll make the shot. It's when he doesn't look at the basket and looks the pass where he gets in trouble. He's shooting 46% for the year, but 56% since that tournament, the Southeastern Conference Tournament. Here is Pat Ewing. That's it to block that shot. Well, Melvin Turpin's playing right behind Patrick Ewing, letting Ewing handle the ball easily, and as I said at the top of the show, Ewing is very much underrated as an offensive player. Kentucky by two. Melvin Turpin, who had a 42-point game this year. Here's that full-court pressure. Dickie Beal beating it on the run. Retrieved that time. A smothering defense by Georgetown. Bowie lost the handle, oh. and he hit himself. Oh, he really hit. He might have hurt himself on on the rim was it his forehead or his nose right above the bridge of the nose i believe he got hit gary it should have been a technical foul on sam Bowie. in my opinion he grabs the rim right here now watch it the ball slips out of his hand now watch there's no question he grabbed the rim and i think he didn't really hit the rim he got hit on the inside by uh it, it looked to me like patrick ewing i think it was caught, ewing caught him on the bridge of the nose it was ewing that did First, I thought he might have hit his head on the rim. Well, I really think it should have been a technical foul on Sam for grabbing the rim. Melvin Turpin is a 75% free throw shooter. Sam shaking it off. Sam has come back one of the outstanding stories of this college basketball season. I want to see him get hurt at this stage. Melvin's a very good free throw shooter. Excellent release on the shot. Kentucky 5, Georgetown 2. Michael Jackson, outstanding outside shooter for this Hoya team. Red Brown, he distributes the ball. There's an example. Ewing. Rebound, Walker had it for a moment. Jackson will reload. Nice looking shot. And here's that pressure. Now, I said, Georgetown's running a soft press right here. They're really not aggressively out there. And, of course, they don't have Gene Smith in the game, who's their number one press man. Jim Master again, and he's hit two shots in a row. And when he gets hot, this Kentucky team's a different ball club. Isn't it amazing with all the size and the talk about twin towers and all that publicity, the real key to the game for Kentucky is how does their backcourt play? John Thompson conferring with Jackson on the move down the floor, and Dickie Beal has committed the foul. That was a clear out for Jackson. Beal got stuck with him one-on-one. -on -one. The whole side of the floor was cleared out. The attendance here, 38,471. Magnificent facility here for the second semifinal game. The first one in overtime, won by Houston, 49 to 47. Ed Brown wants a little housekeeping done there. There's Tark, and Tark, of course, had the opportunity to play this Georgetown team. Played him twice. Played him very well at, at UNLV, and of course got beat in the region. Red Brown, of course, played in that championship game two years ago. Master coming way out to guard Brown. You know Brown's not going to shoot out there. That's just kind of a waste of effort. And there's a clear out again on Beal. And Beal got the best of that one. He swipes the ball. Twice in a row now, Georgetown has cleared out on Dickie Beal and made him play Jackson one-on-one. -on -one. He might be testing Beal's knee to see how quick he is. Kenny Walker. Turpin is there. Turpin again. Rebound, Jackson. to Wingate, considered the quickest player on this Hoyas team. Walker with the rebound. A little different tempo in the first game. Yeah, much different tempo in the ballgame. That time, Patrick Ewing didn't even cross half court. Walker into Sam. 
and it's tough on the board. So we're going to have a foul on Kenny Walker. You know what's going to happen here, Gary? Both of these teams are going to have to catch their second win because they're so aggressive in the way they're playing and going up on the board. You speak of aggressive. There's an aggressive player. Michael Graham, number 50, and also Gene Smith, number 22, comes in. And here comes yet another player, Reggie Williams. Don Thompson may I check that. Bill Martin. Billy Martin. Don Thompson in. may have the best depth of anybody in the country. He'll play ten guys. And he used them so well, Gary. They get in the ball game, and, and it really doesn't disrupt the flow of their chemistry, no matter who he puts in the ball game. The team he's got on the floor right now will really put some defense on you. Nice pass to you. What an athlete. Patrick Ewing on a little touch shot. I watched that lob right there, and I wondered how in the world was he going to get it off. Kentucky by one. Master almost traveled, and he did. He dragged the pivot foot. And there again, Patrick Ewing standing back there, even though there was a big man with him. He made Jim Master pick up his dribble when normally you'd take it right to the hoop in that case. Smith, the captain of the Hoyas, the defensive gem for this club. Ewing back out to Jackson. And Bowie goes up. A foul's going to be on Jim Master, who was trying to go over the back, his first. Third team foul against the Wildcats. That's an excellent block out by Gene Smith. Guards and, and the way Ballard basketball is played have got to learn to go in and have good block out position. We saw Dayton throughout the tournament, even with a small team with good blocking out, rebound effectively. Here is Bill Martin, who was the starter earlier in the year, and Walker strips the ball from him. He leads his team in steals. Jim Master a little hesitant again. Backs it back out. Good job by Billy Martin picking him up. Kentucky wisely holds up. Trying to get their two big men in an offensive flow here. There's Turpin. To Turpin. Ewing did not even go up, but somehow got a hand on the ball. It will be off of Georgetown. I'm really impressed, though, with Melvin Turpin. He's taking the ball right to Patrick Ewing, not hesitating at all. John Thompson, his 12th year as the coach of the Hoyas, his team down by one. Walker, they left him alone. Oh, nice shot. Kenny Walker has been in the shadow of the Twin Towers all year long. The sophomore has really contributed, though, 12 and a half points a game and six rebounds. Well, you spread out that scoring when you have so many outstanding players. Great man to man, as I pointed out. Smith off to Bill Martin, and he walked to the ball. I give Kenny Walker a lot of credit. Two great defensive plays. A steal on the possession before that, and then a good help right there. Timeout, 14-41 to go in the first half. Kentucky leads the Hoyas 9-6. Six, Kentucky leading Georgetown. Bobby Knight is here. He'll be the halftime guest of Brent Musburger. And, of course, he's won two NCAA championships, 76 and 81. And this Kentucky team... Their history, very rich basketball tradition. They've won five national titles themselves. Of course, Bobby going to try to join Dean Smith as the only man to win the NCAA, the NIT, and the Olympic gold. There's Graham pushing a little bit on Bowie. I don't think it's going to be a foul, just a warning by the official. Nice piece of officiating. I'm not going to let this get out of hand. That's a pretty safe inbound pass. Put it up in the air and let a seven-foot-one guy bring it down. He's saying not only catches it well, but he knows where to pass the ball. And here's that matchup. Beal and Gene Smith. And Smith up. is going to draw the foul. Beal called for charging. That's what Gene is so good at doing. Now, what I think you have to do against Georgetown is to work the ball up the court a little bit at a time. As Kentucky did, they got the ball inbounds to Bowie. Then back to Beal, then get it up to half court. Don't try to beat him all the way as Dickie Beal did right there. It's gonna be tiring too. Yep, here's Kentucky going to zone for the first time. One, two, two zone with Walker out front. He's so quick and so tall, it's tough to get shots. Bill Martin, nice, soft shot, and it's a one point game. Here it is, back in Sam Bowie. Now Dickie Beal going up against Gene Smith. Coach John Thompson calls Smith his defensive par. He just goes out and kind of reaches people out of there. Now that's a tough shot. He hit it. Turn counterclockwise. I don't think Ewan expected that. He thought he'd come the other way with it. Turpin nope. is going right at it. Yes, he is. Melvin Turpin's had some great games 
I guess when Charles Barkley doesn't walk on the floor from Auburn, everything's all right for Melvin. Martin, and we're going to have a foul by Ewing over the back. That is his second personal, and John Thompson calls his big seven-footer over to him. Gary, one thing, Patrick Ewing has played against a team with two big men when he goes up against St. John's with Allen and Winnington. In those ball games, he's played pretty well, but he has picked up nine fouls in two of the games that both of them played. He has fouled out, however, only twice this year, and a foul at the other end. Kenny Walker aggravated that Achilles heel that's given him some problems. You see him limping a little bit right now. He is, uh, he's really been hampered by that in practice. So he's he's going to come out of the ball game. He's going to come out. He stretched a lot yesterday as coming in as freshman Winston Bennett. He is in the category of a warrior, too. He will not be intimidated at all by this physical Georgetown team. And now Ewing is coming out of the ball game. Dalton comes in for him. Looks like John Thompson's figure in this game is going to take the full 40 minutes. Oh, that was a foul. Was foul. He was hit by Jackson. No call. No question about it, Gary. Master was grabbed right in the arm in that one. And Georgetown goes to the zone without Ewing in the ball game. Dalton now in the middle. Remember that Dayton game, Billy? John Thompson got Ewing out of that game early, too. He's seemingly resting and let him make that critical third foul. 13 minutes to go in this first half. 11 to 8, Kentucky with the lead. Master, Martin up in his face. Oh, nice job by Sam Bowie. That was a rebound way above everybody. Sam Bowie, a very articulate, bright man who has battled back from two years of inactivity. And here you see the same defense. Winston Bennett has a lot of the same characteristics. And he can play that point right on that 1-2-2 two, two zone, drop all the way back in the middle. He's got six guys. Turpin with a steal and Dalton with a foul. Turpin joins some quickness that time defensively. Here you see Billy Martin going over Alder in that shot. Bowie comes over the top of everybody. The ball takes an extra bounce. Graham can't get it, and Bowie lays it in. for the first time is Reggie Williams and we're going to have a traveling call defensively again the Hoya is starting to cause some problems that's four turnovers against Kentucky well one of the things that's happening in Kentucky when you beat Gene Smith and he's pressing you he's going to chase you down from the back side so you have to protect the ball a little better than Kentucky has so far there's your score and your time in this first half. The winner to play Houston Monday night for the championship. And here's Reggie Williams who just checked in. Excellent offensive player. Not afraid to take the shot. There it is. Rebound by Winston Bennett. Great. Kenny Walker and Winston Bennett on that 1-2-2 two, two zone can crash right down the center for rebounding. They're the perfect players for that spot defensively. Graham really pushing around on Turpin inside. Here's Bowie posting up, but he can't get it. Dalton with the ball. Five turnovers against the Wildcats. Smith, beautiful pass to Martin. Blocked by Bowie, by Turpin, and it's going to be off of Kentucky. And two big horses on the inside doing a real job. Gene Smith almost lost his ball a couple of times. Billy Martin goes up. Bowie gets it, then Turpin gets it. Ball goes right off Turpin's hands, out of bounds. Ewing comes back in. Dalton will lead. Michael Jackson will also come in for Georgetown. There's Dalton sitting down, and Michael Jackson. So two of the starters back in as Smith and Dalton lead. Georgetown not shooting very well, as you can see, from the free throw line. Or I should say field goal percentage. Nice, Thanks, Williams. Card. Excellent call. Winston Bennett now goes all the way from the top of the 1-2-2 two, two zone all the way down to the baseline to draw the charge. Excellent defensive play. That's Reggie Williams, first personal foul and team foul number five against the Hoyas. Now it's Graham and Bowie. They're trying to lob the ball to Bowie to get this ball in bounds. But Graham doing a nice job against it. Mickey Beal had three surgeries on that knee. He had to come back from some mental problems with it. He really didn't feel he could play, and all of a sudden it started coming around, and he started the last 11 games. Turpin fakes Ewing up, almost got his third foul. Just like in the first game, Gary, I talked about keeping your head and eye turned to that ball. That time Melvin Turpin thought that Sam Bowie was going to take the jump shot, turned his head, and the ball went out of bounds on the pass. 
Turnover number six against Kentucky. You're going to turn the ball over against teams that play this tough of defense. They're at a record-setting pace as far as field goal percentage allowed. 36%. Graham, difficult shot at best. Master with the rebound. Van Bowie hustling down court. Had the lob. Kentucky leads it 13 to 8. 11 minutes to go in the first half. There's Georgetown back to the man-to-man -man now with Patrick Ewing in the game on surface. Away from the ball, a foul Winston on Bennett. Winston Bennett. As we told you, Bennett will not back off from anyone. He commits his first foul, 15 foul against Kentucky. See Dalton back in the ball game for Graham. John Thompson just like a revolving wheel out there. He, he just puts in substitutes one right after another, and it doesn't slow him down. And he has nurtured that. He has brought that depth along. Coming back in the game, Georgetown now has missed five in a row from the field. 13 to 8. Kentucky started in the man to man, and now they're in that zone almost exclusively. There's Ewing inside. The Twin Towers gang up on him, and Kirpin commits a foul. His first. 16 foul. That's when you can really throw a lob pass, and you throw a lob pass over Bowie and in front of Turpin, and Patrick Ewing still gets his hands on the ball. Coming in is Fred Brown, leaving Bill Martin. You've got to have a head on a swivel in this ball game to pick up all these people coming back and forth off the bench for Georgetown. And Georgetown looking to try to get some outside shooting. Both teams playing hard nose defense. Even though Kentucky in the zone, it's not passive. They really attack the ball. Michael Jackson, that ball was altered. I believe yep. Beal got a hand on it. Look at Ewing go for that ball. We saw Keem do the same thing in the first game. They hit the backboard going up on that, and Jackson has it. You can hear it from here. It's hard to imagine you throw a lob when the Kentucky's got two guys in the back line at seven feet. There are no easy shots out there right now. Reggie Williams has a good outside shot. Dalton with the rebound. Followed by Williams. And Dickie Beal has it. Good job by Sam Bowie to keep that ball alive and tap it out. Georgetown is not shooting a good percentage at all. They've gotten the good shots. They're now shooting four of 19 from the field. But Gary, you look at both of these clubs. Georgetown holding teams below 40%, and Kentucky at 41. Sam Bowie's going to try to put one away and does. Sam Bowie with four points. Kentucky now by seven. John Thompson asked for a timeout. The Georgetown not shooting well. Kentucky hanging in there tough on the board. They have a seven-point lead with 908 left in the first half. Kingdome in Seattle, the event, the final four, the second semifinal game. I'm Gary Bender along with Billy Packer. And in the first game, if you've just joined us, Houston defeated Virginia in overtime, 49 to 47. In this game, Kentucky is leading 15 to 8. And if you look at the shooting percentages, you can understand why. But before we do that, we're going to zero in on a man who won 10 NCAA championships. Now that stat we talked about in the first game where Virginia lost 11 games this year and John Wooden's 10 championship teams didn't lose 11 games in 10 years. Incredible individual. We started to say Georgetown shooting has been very, very poor. They're shooting 21% from the field. Bowie and, and pushing down inside with Ewing. Now let's see what they're going to call this. It Look may be turning. just a little lesson here. Bowie and and, and Bowie has really been slamming down there with Patrick Ewing. And they're pushing each other, swinging, trying to get position. A double foul. It's going to be a double foul. Double foul. That would give Kentucky Ewing his third foul. That's the damaging point there as far as Georgetown is concerned. Well, a lot of people have felt throughout this ball game that the key would be that Kentucky has five fouls that can be committed by two seven-footers where Georgetown only has one seven-footer, that being Patrick Ewing, you can pick up five. So. That really staring Booker Turner down, the official. But he has to leave. Graham comes in. Jackson connects from outside. And after missing nine in a row, Jackson gets one in for Georgetown. Here's the press. A little zone press this time. That's going to be a foul. And coming from behind, Fred Brown. 
And John Thompson really has to be concerned now because he's down, he's got eight minutes to go, and he's got his big horse sitting on a bench right next to him. I doubt seriously if we'll see Patrick Ewing again this half. Kentucky, that foul on Brown is first, and that is the 17th foul, Billy. They're already shooting free throws, and this man can shoot them very well. Jim Master shooting 81% for the year. Master goes way down in that crowd, much less like Kyle Macy, the outstanding star for Kentucky. Morris Rodnax, 32, an excellent outside shooter, replaces Brown. So they have their two best outside shooters in there now, and Jackson and Rodnax. And a lot of quickness. Six-point lead for the Wildcats. Substitution, another one of those fine freshmen for Kentucky coming in, number 10, James Blackman. So both Bennett and Blackman, two of the top 10 freshmen in the country. And you can see that uh, rebounding. Both teams going on the offensive boards pretty well. But that zone's causing Georgetown a lot of problems. It's an aggressive zone. Winston Bennett and Kenny Walker doing a good job in the middle. Michael Graham gets it out to Broadnax, and that's what they inserted him for, that very kind of shooting. Got to be able to hit some outside shots. Kenny Ooh, Walker. travel to the ball. He tried to change direction and got hung up. Eight turnovers against the Wildcats. Joe Hall wisely made his substitution with Turpin. Now that he's got Ewing on the bench, he can afford to go ahead and alternate Bowie and Turpin. There's Jackson, the other half of that shooting duo, and all of a sudden now it's 17-14. Amazing, they're making this run with Ewing on the bench. Jackson with six points. Nice pass. And boy. He can handle the ball as well in the open court as any big man in college basketball today. Loves to handle it in that circumstance. Oh, nice penetration by Dickie Beal. Blackman didn't realize he was going to get in there that easy. Beal wanting some help out there. He gets it. But five seconds called on Kentucky. Nobody came, turnovers. Nobody came to help Dickie Beal out on that case. And if one of the big men had come outside, he could have given the ball off. You can see why teams this year have been held down as swarming, the swarming defense of Georgetown. Gets the ball back to the Hoyas. A trail by three. That's the ninth turnover, as you saw on the screen. Not surprising. Good hard-nosed defense to create them. Uh, Georgetown's got three real scores on the perimeter. Broadnax, Jackson, and Williams. Makes it tough on the zone. Edgy Williams. Bowie pushes out, has position, and the rebound. Sam Bowie plays a little tougher than people uh, think. He made the Olympic team in 1980. You know, he may be one of the few guys ever to make the Olympics twice, certainly in... Uh, in the future, there won't be many that'll have a chance. That was a nice pass by Bowie, setting up Dickie Beal. Kentucky 19, Georgetown 14, Beal with four points. Joby Hall feels that Sam Bowie in another half year will be back 100% physically. Well, Gary, he's improved so much since we saw him early in the year in regard to his uh, game physical condition. Georgetown just trying to surround the zone with the good shooters they have here, getting Williams and Jackson open. Jackson, there's Beal. Beal showing how quickly he can go to the other end, and that'll be a foul on Jackson. You can see why he says, Joe Hall says, he puts us in overdrive. He was down there very, very quickly. Good job by both players here. Bill, you see his quickness of hand right here. Picks the ball right up off the floor in the dribble, and Jackson hustling all the way and tries to slice in and foul him. Good concentration by Beal going to the, in for the layup. Almost made that shot. That foul on Jackson is first. Oh, they called that a one and one. I can't believe that one. They did call the one and one. Dickie Beal was definitely in the air, ready to go ahead and and put up the shot was in the motion. Well, it's academic now. He hit the first one anyway. 2014, there it shows you how he has picked up his play in turning play. And that's one of the reasons this Kentucky team is where they are now. They had to have that final piece of the puzzle. They had Roger Harden playing that spot for a while. They needed his senior leadership. And again, Kenny Walker and Bowie on the back line. 
with Winston Bennett right out there in the top. That's a tough defense to look at. Blackman on the steal, but he was out of bounds. And Blackman and Deal with their quickness on the wings. It's a tough zone. Blackman has those long arms, and he reaches out, and I think, I think he really uh, surprises people the way he can get over there so quickly. Really, now Georgetown doesn't have a lot of offensive punch inside. Even though Dalton's in there, they don't have the punch. There's Blackman again with the steal. Eight turnovers against Georgetown. Now Georgetown man-to-man. -man. Let's see if Sam Boy doesn't get a chance to handle a little bit inside. Back door, but they anticipated that. Graham kicks it out. Bell is hammered. There's no foul. And that's going to be a blocking foul on Blackman. His first. And now they'll be shooting free throws. Seventh team foul against Kentucky. Here you're going to see what happens to Blackman. He gets caught in the open court with Broadnax. Good crossover dribble. And Blackman is just not stationary. Broadnax beats him. Jim Master will come back in for Kentucky. And... Master played on our Pan American team that won the gold medal. According to both Jim and his coach, that's where he really gained a lot of maturity, was playing in Caracas. Learned that he could play on the international level. And as a member of the Pan Am team, he gets an automatic invitation to the Olympic trial team. Show you the confidence that Coach Hall has in Bowie's physical strength. He hasn't come out of the ball game, and we have 5.26 left in this first half. Turpin, on the other hand, is... Uh, been down for some time now. Well, I believe the reason for that is he wants to save him for the second half of the game where Patrick Ewing, of course, is sitting on the bench, so he doesn't need both of the big men in there at the same time. Blackman fighting this boy of defensive pressure. 21-15, Kentucky with the lead. 5-10 left in the first half. Boy, Graham with his hands up, and Boy gets the roll. Used all of the rim on that one. Pretty good defense, and he still got it to fall. And boy, with his six point, biggest lead of the game now for Kentucky. Georgetown really has problems with this lineup inside. There goes Graham down. Boy over the top of him. Now, and they're talking it over right now. And we're going to see the pushing and shoving. Remember the double foul that was called earlier on Patrick Ewing? That's going to be called on Sam Bowie. That's his second, right? Well, boy was a little hot. Graham, uh, who doesn't back off from anybody, will be going to the free throw line. This guy has been very controversial this year. He's had such labels as the hatchet man, the intimidator. He looks menacing, doesn't he? You better believe it, Mr. Clean. That wasn't close. Blackman almost lost it. That shows you the quickness of Jackson. 4.40 left until halftime. At halftime, Brent will bring on Bobby Knight. Boy, they're trying to get the ball to Bowie. He's getting knocked all over. Got to be a foul on Graham. It is. Good call. And Graham is just banging on the inside. You'll see it here. Now, Sam Bowie trying to get position. Graham banging, pushing, shoving. Now he's got good defensive position, and he looks and said, I didn't push anybody. The hammer and Hoyas, and there's one of the leaders. Graham with his first foul. Now, Michael Jackson was asked by John Thompson to ask Ron Spittler a question, and he's upset. Thompson is upset. Bowie was seven points. Remember early in the year, we saw Sam Bowie go, and he was slingshotting the basketball, but he's improved that technique since that time. He really has. He's back to getting good rotation on the ball. Now, Joe Hall making a real wise move here. He's probably going to take Sam out of the game and bring Melvin Turpin in. Let's see. Yep. See, he's gone ahead and using both of his men where John Thompson doesn't have that opportunity. Thompson has this big man, Ewing, on the bench with three fouls. Team going up against two other seven-footers. Kentucky got the advantage when the team got in foul trouble and got tired. The same thing is holding true today. Kentucky being able to wisely use both of their men. Now Joe, Joe Hall is also wisely substituting to keep one on the court as long as Georgetown has Patrick Ewing out of there. Kentucky's forward scoring 
And their 10 point lead, that's the difference. You know, Akeem played against Kentucky earlier this year. That's lost right. on Super Bowl that's Sunday. Saying, on Super Bowl Sunday, when he lost, he had to go against those two big men and got himself in foul trouble. 419 left until halftime. Gene Smith, 22, has come back into the ball game. Now you look at that lineup, wonder where the scoring's coming from for Georgetown. They got a real problem getting some points for this lineup. That's off of Georgetown. Melvin Turpin, of course, coming in on that last timeout, replacing Sam Bowie. Very wise move by Coach Hall. With Ewing in foul trouble, just play one of your twin towers. Georgetown trying a little zone pressure here, and then they go back to man to man. Looks like Kentucky's handling the pressure pretty well. Yes, they are. Here's Bennett. Forced the shot. Graham. Oh, Graham comes down. He's ready to take you on. The key for Georgetown, though, is where are you going to get your points from? You look at this lineup. Bad shot by Broadnack. It's been bad shooting the whole story for Georgetown. They're still only shooting 29%. Well, you've got Williams that can score. Broadnack's a, Broadnack's a pretty good scorer, but Gene Smith, Dalton, and Graham are not scorers on the floor, so John Thompson's got a problem where he's going to get his points. He'll leave you in on that bench until the second half. Well, he's got three to. fouls. Yeah, he's got to with a three foul. Melvin Turpin, Jordan Hill Range. That's his shot. He can step out and shoot that jumper with anybody. He can explode on you. He's had 42 and 35 point games. Kentucky, Kentucky looking awesome right now. And I think Georgetown got some serious problems scoring-wise there. They've got David Wingate on the sidelines, but John Thompson realized he's got to put somebody who can score out there. Ewing went out at the 8.52 mark, now with 2.41. At that time, Kentucky led 15 to 8. Now they lead by 12. Graham. Big basket. Big, big basket. 6'9", freshman from the Washington, D.C. area, has scored his first two points. David Wingate will come in. Reggie Williams will leave. Wingate and Williams from the same high school, Dunbar and Baltimore. You see Georgetown picking up pressure all over the court. Gene Smith gets knocked to the floor. That's going to be a foul on Winston Bennett. That is a classic Gene Smith defensive move. Now, Bennett just got frustrated and smacked him with his arm. He'll get start. under you, and he will draw those fouls. That is going to go down, of course, not only as a foul, but a turnover. That's 10 against Kentucky. And coming into the ball game is going to be Brett Barrett. Both of these teams have great benches. Quality players sitting down on that bench that they can bring them at any time. Interesting substitution as he now brings Bennett out of the ball game. Bowie's still on the bench. I think Joe Hall just wanted to calm him down a little bit. Shooting one and one. You go ahead and start getting a little frustrated, knock somebody to the floor. You go ahead, sit down, relax. Joe Hall keeping everybody fresh. Gene Smith with nice rotation on the ball. He's not that good a free throw shooter, shooting 59%. His first point. John Thompson, a little concerned. He wants to stay as close as possible with Ewing on the bench and start over again in the second half. Well, with 2.30 to go, he's really got some problems, Gary, because, as I said, Kentucky got a superior lineup out there right now. There's a rebound by Smith. Rodnex to bring it out. The little guys kept it alive. Smith and Rodnex got a rebound. Joe Hall, furious that they let the little guys sneak in there and get that board. Now Brett Barrett playing the top of that zone. Another guy that can break down the middle and get some rebounds. See the time, 2.05 left in the first half. David Wingate. Tough That's shot. seven. That's a tough shot because you've got Kenny Walker bearing down on you. That was the margin that they trailed when Ewing went out with his third foul. They've gotten it back within seven again. Good job by Kenny Walker coming over to help out. Pass. Turpin couldn't hang on. We have a hell ball, and it will go to Kentucky. Shows you the strength of Melvin Turpin. Gene Smith is a powerful young man. And Turpin got one hand on the ball, and Smith couldn't run away from him. And Ewing has played only nine minutes in this half. We still have a minute 30 left, and now the Georgetown coaching staff want to be sure that that alternating possession is indeed Kentucky's. 
And that's the way we have it. That's the way the scorer's table has it. There's Patrick constantly rooting on that teammate. Brookstown's really done a fine job staying in this game without Patrick getting on the floor. Well, they haven't lost any ground since he went out. It's still that seven-point difference. You wonder if Kentucky will come back to the Twin Towers before this half is over to try to take advantage of the little mismatch they've got when they have them on the court. Good pressure, but also good offensive reaction by Kentucky, in particular Jim Master. Oh, that is tough defensive pressure. See, but Kentucky's not looking to score here. And Barrett has been fouled by Gene Smith. Gary, if you don't look to score against defensive pressure of that type, the, the defense just keeps pushing you out for you. You use so little uh, part of the half court that it makes it very difficult to get a pass off. The intensity of Smith and John Thompson, who has just nurtured this ball club along beautifully. He has great rapport with his players. Hits the free throw. And Michael Jackson will come back in, and Smith will leave. You know, this Kentucky team, from a free throw standpoint, in this tournament is shooting 76%. During the regular season, Bill, they almost 72. So they are good shooters, not only from the field, but from the line. Really they are 9 of 10 this afternoon. It really helps to bring up, have a bench where you can bring a guy like Brett Barrett who was one of the most highly recruited players in his senior year in high school off of that bench as the third man you have playing that position. They're going to go for the last shot here. Good move. Good move. John Thompson wants to get this first half over so he can get Patrick Ewing down, out on the court and doesn't want to be down in double figures. Nine-point difference as you see less than 30 seconds left in this first half. And for Jackson, Wingate, and Broadnax, all three can shoot from the perimeter. What's this? Well, oh, he's not warning them. Warning that they must play, but they were playing as long as they pass that ball in over the mid-court area. The clock superimposed there. Who are they looking to? Jackson and Wingate. There's Jackson. Jackson penetrates to Grant. Oh, he almost brought it down with that one. Great play. Four points for Graham, and that was impressive. And John Thompson got exactly what he wanted. I thought that was excellent coaching move. Blackman will not even get a shot underway. And so the Kentucky Wildcats, who have been in the final four eight times, they've won five national championships, lead the Hoyas of Georgetown at halftime, 29 to 22. And now with their halftime, let's go to Brent. Time here, and of course, the big story Pat Ewing will be back to start the second half. Can he stay away from the fourth and fifth personal? We're going to come back and talk to our Olympic coach Bobby Knight after this message and a word from your local station. At halftime, Kentucky leading Georgetown by those seven points, and with me, the coach of Indiana and also. The coach of the United States Olympic team, Bobby Knight, and the Georgetown fans were chanting USA, USA. Coach, they're ready, but what about the first half for their Hoyas in Kentucky? Well, they were as you suggest. You know, you've become better and better as the years go by and knowing what's going on, Brent. As you suggested, I think they were very tight to start the half. Their shooting wasn't real good. Kentucky's defense, I think, on the other hand, has been very good. I think for Georgetown to get back in the ball game. Uh, Ewing is going to have to obviously stay out of foul trouble. He's going to have to score, and I think they're going to have to score pretty quickly starting the second half. Now, when we turn back to the first game, Bobby, of course, in overtime, it was won by Houston. We have a moment that allowed Virginia to tie it, and that, of course, was Othell Wilson here stripping the ball and coming down for the layup. Bobby, Houston seems to have so much talent, but yet they self-destruct on themselves. Well, I think that a problem that Houston has, uh, Brent, is from a coaching standpoint, I just don't think they come out and apply pressure as they should. I think you can sit back in a zone, and Virginia did a great job moving the ball at their offensive end, getting the shots for Miller and Carlisle, and that kept them in the game. At the other end, they jammed things pretty well, and and we're able to take some things away from Houston. And I made the comment at the beginning of the game that it was going to go right down to the wire. So I at least knew that much about it. 
Let's turn our attention to a couple of players who have emerged in this tournament who probably will be invited to your trials. I know you're not going to release the list yet, but how about Roosevelt Chapman, young man from Dayton? We've got a clip of him in action. Could he help the U.S. Olympic team? Well, Chapman is a heck of an athlete and did a great job with Don Donaher's Dayton team, and Dayton was one of the teams, as we see Chapman score from 15 feet there, that did a great job in the tournament, I think along with Virginia. I think Virginia and Dayton are two teams that were just outstanding in the tournament. Your young freshman guard, Alfred. I thought he did a magnificent job against North Carolina. Didn't carry you too well in the next game, but will he have a chance? Well, Steve has been a heck of a kid for us all year long, and we got to get him moving without the ball a little bit better. I hope he's at home listening right now, because I talked to him about that after the Virginia game, but for a freshman to come into a situation where a lot was expected of him, he did an excellent job, and uh, we're looking forward to having him with us the next three years, moving better, Steve, without the basketball. All right, Coach delivers his message. We will continue our coverage. Today's national semifinal game between the Kentucky Wildcats and the Georgetown Hoyas is sponsored by Chevrolet. America is on the move, and Chevrolet is supplying the wheel. Chevrolet and you taking charge. Mr. Goodwrench and General Motors Parts. And by Honda Motorcycles and the ATC three-wheelers. Honda, follow the leader. The Kentucky Wildcats with a seven-point lead at halftime, 29 to 22. And as you check the statistics in this first half, Billy, both teams have hit 10 field goals. The only difference is Kentucky shooting a better percentage. They've hit half theirs. On the other hand, Georgetown struggling. Well, it's amazing also. Georgetown holds clubs below 40% field goal shooting-wise. Kentucky getting 50 there. I thought Joe Hall did a brilliant job in moving his two twin towers in and out of that lineup so he had them both fresh. Look at the free throw percentage. Kentucky a good free throw shooting team. And Kentucky outscoring him at the forward spot. A lot of that attributed to Sam Bowie, who had eight of those 12 points. Well, another thing about that lineup situation is John Thompson fluctuates his lineup so much it's hard to tell who's the four with the center. But one thing he does not want to fluctuate, and that's that center position. The key in the second half is how long can Patrick Ewing stay in the game and stay in the game aggressively. For Kentucky, they played an excellent first half, and I would be, I would be amazed if John Thompson wasn't kind of happy that he's only seven down at this point, the way Kentucky had control that first half. As we mentioned, Ewing this year has fouled out only two times. John Thompson could only play him nine minutes in that first half, and there he is, and he said that's what we'll watch closely. That fourth foul he cannot afford to get in the early going. And Gary, he had nine fouls in the two games he played against, well, he played St. John's three times, but in the two games he had to go up against the two seven-footers, he had nine fouls, so same thing could happen here today. He could be in serious trouble. Bowie tips it out of bounds. It's Wingate, Smith, Jackson, Graham is starting the second half along with Ewing. Wingate's got to get off the ground too if Georgetown's going to put some points on the board. Kentucky starts the same five that opened this ball game. Wingate, let's see if that'll do it. That's exactly what you're talking about. That's an excellent pass that time by Patrick Ewing, and here comes the pressure. Wingate's hit two from the corners. 29-24 is four points for the game. How valuable it is to have Sam Bowie catch that ball on the inbound against the press. Man to man now by, by Georgetown. Good nice fake. fake. He almost had Patrick with his fourth foul. In master and not well shot. Wingate comes out of there. Smith three on one and Smith just takes it in. Gary, I'm not so sure Smith didn't turn the ball over there. That seven-point lead has been whittled down to three. Now, Kentucky does not want Master handling the ball out there. Another steal. Smith trying to come up with yet another one. And he and Jackson really had the double team on Master. Now, Joe Hall would rather have that ball in Dickie Beal's hands, you can be sure. This is exactly the way John Thompson wanted to start this second half. And Bowie had that play to go over again. You believe he'd have drawn the foul on Patrick Ewing when he had it in the air. There's going to be a foul on Smith reaching in on Beal. His second personal foul. There aren't many players that can guard a man in the open court like Gene Smith can in the backcourt. He is just so powerful, moves those feet quickly, and Dickie Beal doing a good job right there drawing the foul. You hear about people, Billy, that set the tempo offensively. He sets a tempo playing defense. I think most good teams do create tempo with their defense, not their offense. 
That's what they do in our first game, Houston. They wanted to get moving offensively, but their defense never created the pressure. 29-26, Kentucky leads Georgetown. Patrick Ewing's laying off Sam Bowie now. Here's Turpin from outside. Graham was up there. Smith seems to be everywhere. Comes up with a rebound. Another Turpin got the shot he wanted. Ewing and Bowie very wisely and alertly picked that one off. The lob is not there. Very difficult to get the lob when you've got this kind of size up back in that back line. Good job by Sam Bowie. Jackson wanted to load one up, but Bowie was standing in front of him. Now he does, and this Kentucky team has all of a sudden had that lead whittled down to one point, and we played two minutes of the second half. Again, the lob right into Bowie. It's just hard man-to-man -man pressure. Good double team by Wingate. Kentucky has not scored in the second half. Turpin, uh, kind of a shot. jump kick. I think Not he was in between shot. on that play. He was neither nor there. Broken up. Let's see if the ball was touched defensively. Not at all. Jackson kind of lost concentration here. He had Patrick Ewing. Probably won the lob to him. Georgetown lost an opportunity to take the lead for the first time in this game. That's an effective inbounds. There. It really is. Shows you how versatile Sam Bowie is. He's involved with everything. There is a traveling call, and give that one to Gene Smith again. Now, Kentucky, because of the defensive pressure, not getting into their offense very well here at the start of the second half. Gene Smith, in the first two and a half minutes of the second half, and he's grinning from ear to ear, has turned this game around. And here, surprisingly, Georgetown with a chance to take the lead. It seems like they're totally out of it. Give John Thompson some credit for holding the ball at the end of that first half, Gary, just to not give Kentucky a chance. Who are you going to give that to? Both Graham and I, Ewing were there. I think it was Graham. Anyway, Georgetown has their first lead of the game. And Kentucky has got to get back to their offense. There's the double team. They gave it to Ewing. Ewing is credited with the tip in. They had to give well, when you're the all American, assist. Yeah, when you're the All-American, I guess you get the point. Now it's man-to-man, -man, so tough. Turpin against Graham. Turpin again. The big dipper had rejected on him. Look at Ewing running on a break. Here he comes. Whoa. He no, it's going to be waved off. He traveled. He traveled to the ball. Can he run on the break? He gave it to him a little bit too early. He was loading it up. Yep. And there it was. Graham rebounding, battling hard. Turpin goes up. Graham gets a piece of it. And there, look at Patrick Ewing taking off down that court. He just got it too far out for the basket. Georgetown still has the lead. Kentucky still has not scored in the second half. 16-24 left in the game. Gene Smith fouling again. Got away with it. And they have forced Kentucky completely out of their offense now. Kentucky is 0 for 5 from the field in the second half. Master, and right. they're 0 for 6. And Graham with the rebound, and can you believe it? Ewing, by the way, was shaken up on the play. I think he got hit by one of Graham's elbows. I'm not laughing because he got hit. But uh, Graham just cleans house in there. What a reversal in this game. Kentucky led at halftime 29 to 22 and now it's 30 to 29. What we Georgetown. see right now Georgetown saying I'm not playing you in the zone. John Thompson pulling it out. He is not now. This is a smart move by John Thompson. I'll tell you why. The shorter the game the better chance he has to not get Patrick Ewing in foul trouble. Now Kentucky's coming out but they're really not coming out man to man. Very wise move. Wingate to Graham. Now, Joe Hall's got to really start thinking about a few things here. John Thompson has tipped his hand as far as strategy goes. Joe Hall's going to come back with Winston Bennett to try to get a little pressure defensively. And Joe Hall wants a timeout. They do not see it, though. Bowie missed the shot. Joe was trying to get the timeout. They didn't spot him. Boy, Graham just cleaning house on the board. As you said, that lob is not there, no, and Graham no. commits a foul. Very bad pass. Very bad. John Thompson going to stare his man down here. He's going to take Jackson's head off with a stare. Look at Graham. You talk about a stare. Graham is intimidating. Timeout. 
Kentucky in five minutes of the second half has not scored a point. They trail by three. They outscored Kentucky 10 to nothing. They have out rebounded them six to one. That's mind boggling when you consider what a great team Kentucky is. For the timeout. The Wildcats somehow are going to have to try to get their act back together. They were playing so well in that first half. Well, Gary, the first thing they got to do is start working the ball up the court and get in a half-court offense where they can go back inside to Melvin Turpin. Georgetown has spread their offense, has spread Kentucky's offense throughout the whole court. They just need a basket to get that scoring ice broken here there in the second half. There it is to Melvin Turpin. A little better position. Master going to try to do it. He did not. Here they come. Jackson holds up. They keep it in play. They are a scrambling, clawing, scratching Georgetown team. You know, Georgetown really taking some chances, too. Jackson didn't have a real good shot on the break. Now, here we go. Man-to-man -man defense by Kentucky. Georgetown finally has them play in their kind of game. All right, next on the move. That'll be goaltending on Sam Bowie. A real mismatch there. There's no way Jim Master can stay with Broadnax. Broadnax goes right by him. Sam Bowie comes over, no question about the goaltending. Joe Hall's got to make a substitution change. We now have played six minutes of the second half. Kentucky has not scored. They trail 34-29. Blackman in the ball game now because they've got to have some defensive pressure man-to-man. Took Jim Master out to replace him with Blackman. And you see that Georgetown's not even guarding Dickie Beal on the perimeter. Georgetown backing it back in. Turpin, not they there. still can't get on the scoreboard. And this time Jackson lost the ball. And Kentucky will get another opportunity, and they need one. Kentucky's got to get the ball back inside, Gary, down low, not going out and shooting those jump shots. They've got the big twin towers in there, but they're not going inside to it. The guy coming back in is the guy that got it started for him in the second half. Gene Smith as Jackson will sit down, but Smith, more than any one guy, turned this Gene game around. Smith replaces Michael Jackson for Georgia. Kentucky is now 0 for 9 from the field in the second half. Dan Bowie stepping out. Guy Graham is really doing the job on Turpin inside. They've got to go to him inside. This is kind of a shaken team right now, this Kentucky team. Back to shooting shots they don't want. Ewing staying there and not committing the foul and getting the rebound. Kind of a mad maze to see Kentucky kind of get played offensively. And now the four corners by Georgetown. Kentucky not a team that wants to chase them in man-to-man. -man. Here goes Wingate. Graham, not a good shot. The rebound by Ewing. John Thompson does not want Graham taking that jumper. You see right now, Kentucky's got to come out and play. Now, Winston Bennett ought to get within six feet of Wingate. He could get a five-second call. That last rebound by Ewing now gives Georgetown 11 to 1 lead in the second half. Jackson out of the ball game. Tough shot. It is. Graham almost had the follow. Turpin instead with the rebound. Nice job by Kentucky on defense. Thrown away, but it was touch last by Brodnex. I hate to keep bringing this up, Billy, but Kentucky still has not scored in the second half, and we have 12-12 showing. Did you say you create your offense with your defense? That is from Georgetown's story. Seven minutes and 48 seconds they kept them off the scoreboard. And of course, there was some time they kept them off the scoreboard at the end of the first half also. So we're over uh, eight minutes now without a point. Deal, the Blackman. And he walked to the ball. Twelve turnovers and Joe B. Hall with his hand in his pocket pacing back and forth. You can see some real consternation on that sideline fourth Kentucky. Not only Joe Hall, but also the bench. They seem in awe of what's happened to them here in the second half. Okay, we're going to see now with Jackson in a game and Gene Smith, Georgetown can really play this four-corner type offense because you got Reggie Williams, Gene Smith, and Jackson all out on the wing. And that's the man-to-man -man by Kentucky. 
Georgetown is not to go back to the regular half-court offense. Oops, Graham threw it away. Smith is hot. He did not like it. Gene is, uh, he's kind of the enforcer out there. He gets after his troops pretty good. Of course, he's the captain of the team. Now, the Kentucky fans are up. They want some points on the board. I really think they should go inside, Gary. Try to get Melvin Turpin back in the offense down low. I don't know what John Thompson said at halftime, but I'd like to have taped it. And That's there's a foul. Yep, foul of Reggie Williams pushing off. Winston been a little too strong for him in the upper body. Second foul, third team foul. Reggie Williams, the guilty party, and Kentucky will set it up at the baseline. Another thing is you've got Patrick Ewing playing against Sam Bowie, and Bowie's been playing out on the perimeter, which doesn't put any pressure on Patrick Ewing down inside for that fourth foul. He hadn't even had close to have to guard somebody in his second half. Zone defense now by Georgetown, 2-1-2. Two, two. The last points for Kentucky were with 35 seconds left in the first half, and they came from the free throw line. Brett Barrett, remember those free throws he hit? Nicky Beal. Oh, that Graham is just going to the board. Graham and Ewing both were there. Smith. Rebound, Reggie Williams. Coming out of there comes Dickie Beal. The senior's going to have to somehow provide the ingredient that they're lacking. They have not scored. 10.48 left in the second half. Georgetown stays in his zone. And still, it mystifies me why Kentucky is not getting that ball down low to Sam Bowie and Melvin Turpin. Got to put some pressure on the interior of the Georgetown defense. It's like they can't pull the trigger. They are that shaken, and here's a veteran ball club. That should not be that way. You've got the three seniors in there now, Beal and Bowie and Turpin. Georgetown's playing a 2-1-2 zone, but they're matching up with this 2-1-2 zone, and it's really throwing Kentucky off stride. Because even though it's 2-1-2, it's a matchup zone. Good pass. Winston Bennett, and they're on the board with almost 10 minutes left. 9.55 to be exact before they were able to score. That's a great pass. in it down by three even though that was their first points in the second half now georgetown goes back to their four corners winston bennett can guard reggie williams though gene smith oh ewing wisely did not follow tip he mid-air stopped his move had his body up there pulled his hand back gene smith hurt his ankle on that one and smith goes hobbling off and Georgetown has a 36 to 31 lead, and Gene Smith right now has been the man of the hour for this Hoyas team. Gene Smith to limp on that last play. Well, he made the penetration move and came right down on Melvin Turpin's sneaker. He is not back in the lineup right now. He's trying to run it off of the sideline. There's nobody any tougher than he is. But uh, he, that happens so often, Gary. We see a guy come down on another player's foot and twist that ankle. Well, he's done it all in this second half. A five-point lead for Georgetown. Kentucky comes back in with their two freshmen and three seniors. And Joe Hall realizing he has to have quickness out there in the lineup to go ahead and play against that four corners offense that uh, Georgetown's using right now. You see the time left in this game. Nine minutes and 55 seconds before Kentucky scored in the second half. Now we'll go on Reggie Williams. No reason for Reggie Williams to be out there pushing against Winston Bennett. That's his third personal foul, fourth team foul against the Hoyas. Foul is charged to Georgetown's number 34, Reggie Williams, his third team fourth. Beal will reset it. Every time Beal goes to throw the ball in bounds, he looks for Sam Bowie and just lobs it up there. Here's Turpin. That's the play. It works. Winston Bennett had the nice follow. Wouldn't go. Beal gets it off to Bennett. And rejection by Ewing. And Ewing shaken up. He's down at the other end. He got hit right in the face. And Williams scores. But Ewing is slow in getting up. Patrick Ewing got hit right, right across the face. And that was not a foul. It's not going to be a foul. It's going to be Winston Bennett. Ewing goes over to try to block the shot. And watch it. Right after the shot. The follow-through by Bennett went right into Patrick Ewing's face, 
But Georgetown recovered very well, goes down and scores on the break. That was Williams scoring at the other end. A seven-point lead. Turpin goes out of the ball game. Kenny Walker comes in. Turpin missing that shot. He has not been able to hit the second half. Yeah, with Kenny Walker in there, Kentucky's much quicker, but they have got to get some game going down inside. They've got Bowie now inside with Patrick Ewing. Well, Ewing playing with three fouls aggressively. He stepped out in front of him defensively. There's the guy playing a great second half in France. He has just been outstanding. Roby Hall, who won the national title in 1978. Well, Joe has won the NIT also. Eight and a half minutes left in the game. The defense not a good shot. Ewing had every position on that. Williams got a little piece of that one. Seven point lead, and John Thompson might just draw him out a little bit now. Oh, yeah. They're going in there four corners, really have things spread out. But Kentucky has a pretty good matchup here defensively. Winston Bennett can guard somebody. Blackman's quick enough to guard somebody. Williams got the five-second yep. count. He didn't get rid of the ball. That'll give it back to the Wildcats. Jim Master comes back in now. Now, Jim Master going to cause him a problem defensively, I think, Gary, because in Blackman, they've got enough quickness to guard somebody. Master will have a hard time matching up with any of the quick players from Georgetown. That was the 15th turnover against Georgetown. Kentucky in this half has hit one of 16. You know what that is? At 6% from the free throw line. Bowie wants that ball down inside on Patrick Ewing. I believe he can pick up a foul on Ewing. Ewing took his eye off the ball. He really did. Now watch the matchup here, Gary. Whoever Master has is going to be the guy that's going to break out of this fourth corner. And it happens to be Whitney. And here's, there he goes. He just takes Masters right away. Graham. They cannot match up Jim Master against any one of those three players. He took Master the minute he touched the ball. Now the biggest lead of the game for Georgetown. Kenny Walker wanting it inside. Winston Bennett making a very difficult shot attempt. Rebound by Reggie Williams. They are now just trying to get anything up in the air. Well, now watch, can, watch again as Wingate's going to be lined up with Master. Wingate feels he can take him anytime he wants to. There he goes. Layup. And they get the foul. The basket will count. Gary, that is a matchup that won't work. Here comes Blackman in. You'll see Master out. Has to go. Here it comes. Right down the pipe, Jim Master not even close defensively. And that's the ball game. You can see his frustration. Well, John Thompson told me that Wingate was the quickest player he has. And you can see it in that play. Well, it was a very tough matchup. Maybe Joe Hall was trying to give Blackman some rest. But coming back in there with Master, it's a tough job. Three-point play. 43-31 Georgetown. Now the clock becomes a big opponent for Kentucky. Try to get that ball inside the buoy. Look at this, 6%. They've scored two points in the second half. Bowie wants the ball. He's getting decent position, but nobody can get him the feed. Georgetown starting to pack things back in a little bit more. There's Bowie. Winston Bennett. Yeah, he's intimidated. A nice reverse attempt by Blackman. He's in there again. And who's this foul going to be on? It's going to be on Brown, I yep. believe. Good rebounding, though, by Blackman. Moving on the inside. Second foul on Fred Brown. Oh, but you've got a defensive well, team. Do you just tell it what's going to happen or not? Fred Brown, the man who's known for the pass, remember 1982, and he'd like to get back into that championship game and put some of those memories behind him at North Carolina loss. Teams remind you in basketball a little bit like the Los Angeles Raiders in football. They That's just right. dictate with their defense. Same colors, a nasty, intimidation, intense, and right now it is getting the job done. Now Georgetown playing 
back way, way inside. Neal misses again. I'm almost afraid to have Mike Swanson update statistically what they're shooting. It was 6%. They're now 1 of 20 in the second half. 1 of 20. Mind-boggling. Now, here's a pretty good defensive matchup for Kentucky. You can see, as soon as Wingate saw he had Bennett on him, he was reluctant to go ahead and try to take him one-on-one. That ball is off the of Blackman. Billy, if you're Joe B. Hall, you're probably saying, who can I call on to spark this team to get us back? Well, looking at that lineup, I, I really believe that you got to go inside, try to pick up some fouls and go for the power game. But what's happening, Georgetown is packing things back in there that it's not really available. Now Jackson, he's a tough man to handle in this offense, too. five minutes to go in the game. John Thompson's made a lot of great moves in this game, Gary. As a coach, he's been outstanding. Held Patrick Ewing out of there. Held the ball at the end of the first half to not give Kentucky the double-figure lead. This big guy hasn't committed a foul in the second half. Out only nine minutes on the floor in the first half. Do the foul trouble with Blackman. And he missed it. And a foul will go on Winston Bennett. What happened to Blackman is he went ahead and tried to get himself in order. Now watch when he makes the steal. Instead of going right for the basket, he's going to hesitate a little bit. Watch him right here. See him hesitate when he hesitated, he was lost. Because he was able to, Jackson was able to catch him. Looked like he wanted to put it away with a slammer, and he didn't do either. As an end result, they have the foul on Winston Bennett, and that epitomizes the frustration of Kentucky. A Wildcats with only two points in the second half. Larry of Seattle. Puget Sound, the site of the Final Four, the Kingdom. And right now, the Georgetown Hoyas have stunned the Kentucky fans, the Kentucky team, and they lead with four minutes and 43 seconds left, 43 to 31, holding Kentucky to only two points in the second half. The Wildcats hitting only one of 21 from the field. You know, Gary, I'm sitting here like I'm involved with the ball game, but tomorrow morning when I pick up the paper is when the stun is really going to come off. I mean, what has happened in the second half? I have never seen in a major college game. Especially and, in a Final Four. Well, oh, pass goes down, Jackson falls, Field loses concentration. Everything going wrong for Kentucky right now. Joe Hall walking down the bench with his hands on his head. He's on the other end of the bench. A good steal. Yes, Blackman with another steal. And so two turnovers. Let's see if they can count on this one for going in for a couple of points. Boy. Corey had to shoot over Ewing. They shoot over him again, and they cannot get the ball in the hole. Now, everybody from Kentucky's crashing the boards. You're going to see Georgetown get an easy basket on the other end of the court. What a dribbling move by Jackson. Jackson Bowie over there collapsing on him. And he called a foul on Bowie, but Georgetown wants the basket. Watch this move by Jackson. Great crossover dribble. Keeps his balance. Goes down inside, gets fouled. There was a push by Walker. And Bowie just swiped the ball away. It's going to be Jackson on the line with two. They did give the foul to Walker. That's yep. his third. And Jackson goes to the line. Now John Thompson, Pat Ewing, like father and son. Center court, last minute instructions. John Thompson, whatever he mapped on the chalkboard and whatever he said to this ball club, he better model it because... He just completely returned this team back in to step away from winning it all. You know what might have happened to Kentucky? They might have felt like they had the big lead and relaxed a little bit at halftime and never just could get it going back in strong. Biggest lead of the game for the Hoyas. 45-31, 4.15 to go. An incredible second half. Well, it's... I would assume we got a tournament record set here for four shooting and a half in a Final Four, if nothing else. Jackson grabbing a hole. Now, John Thompson doesn't want that. He doesn't want any of his team to commit a foul because you just want that clock to go down. Committing his second foul, 16 foul against Georgetown. Georgetown outscoring the Wildcats 23 to 2 in the second half. 
And Georgetown in his own defense now giving a shot open for Blackman. Blackman hit one. Uh, two for 24 now in the second half. And the crowd roared almost sarcastically. And Wingate is fouled by Winston Bennett. See that slashing move even after he was fouled. Wingate and Williams are slashing type drivers for that basket. Joe B. Hall is... I don't, I don't believe the Kentucky players can believe what's happened to them. You're I don't think we're about, believing everything we've seen here. Well, you're talking about one of the most powerful teams to come along in a long time, and they have just been shut out. That's Reggie Williams you're looking at who's come into the ball game. It was 29 to 22 and a half Kentucky. It's now 45-33 Georgetown with three and a half minutes left in the game. Kentucky has good pressure on the ball. There goes Jackson again. And Beal commits a foul. It's the same type of move that Bennett committed the foul on. You know, one of the things about Jackson, Gary, that makes him so tough in the open court is he really sits down as a dribbler. He doesn't ever give you an opportunity to swipe at the ball. He's got a powerful upper body, good quickness, but he really sits down when he dribbles. So the, the ball only leaves his hand and goes about six inches to the floor. Georgetown looking for their 10th straight win, their 20th win in their last 21 outings. Down the stretch, they put it together. Oh, good change of pace. Wingate, and we've got somebody in the net. <laughs> Graham grabbed the net so that he would keep his balance, but they're calling the foul on the push on the inside. That is going to be Graham's third personal. Now they'll be shooting free throws, 17 fouls. Now watch this. Watch Graham, he was off balance, so he just grabbed the net. Now, he got pushed from underneath. The foul's going to be on Georgetown. You get the feeling that Michael Graham has no respect for any object, any person <laughs> out there. It's his property. Uh, he has had an outstanding ball game, And he held his own. Uh, maybe the key to this game will be what Georgetown did with Patrick Ewing on the bench. They stayed, what, eight to eight with, with Kentucky in that first half. Parker gets the roll. 45-34, 3.16 left in the game. Ewing now playing a bully and coming back there to catch the ball. And there's Walker committing the foul. And Jackson had a little trouble, looks like maybe with a cramp, He's pulling on the toe. Well, Kenny Walker's got good quickness. He came over. He's a fellow that may get one of those bids. You know, Kentucky, looking at this club, may have three or four t uh, players off of this squad that'll go to the Olympic trials. So, I mean, you're talking about some great depth of talent. As you can see Walker with his fourth personal foul, and now Fred Brown will come into the game. And Reggie Williams will leave. You know the Georgetown players haven't cracked a smile yet. I mean, it's, they've got to feel very comfortable about getting into the finals here, although they've only got a 10-point lead with three minutes to go. Anything can happen. But they are all been in that back that court? Back court because they inbounds the ball. That's correct. Up in the front court, went back court with it. Well, you can do that, but what happened is Jackson went airborne as he caught the ball, and he was actually in the front court. When he was airborne, he caught the ball, he took it to the back. Here's Walker off the Blackman. Less than three minutes to go. And Kentucky's got to start worrying about that clock. They've got a chance to make a move here. Neal, Walker has the rebound, and all of a sudden it's batted away. Two on one. Nice, nice pass by Jackson Wingate. He wants a traveling call. That was a big basket. Kentucky had a real chance there, Gary. They had it down at 10 and the ball. Wingate with nine points. And Georgetown gets out of the zone. He goes back to an aggressive man to man. There's Bennett working inside. Walker, they're getting some multiple shots now. Bowie, and Bowie has been fouled. Be a foul by Brown in the inside. But that's one of the few flurries in the second half where they were on the offensive boards. It's been Georgetown. But Kentucky going inside now with the basketball. They had so many powerful players. Melvin Turpin hasn't been in the ball game in a long time. The question is, why did they wait so long to go inside? Bowie at the line with 2.19 remaining. One and one. 
10 point average and that really is a little deceiving. The yeah, stats of, are very deceiving. Yep, he did a lot of things for the team. Outlet pass, good feeder, excellent rebounder. And just now really coming back to physically where he was two years ago. 80% now and he's going to have a fine pro career. And Georgetown has to be a little bit more patient with the ball. There's still a lot of time left in this ball game. Ten point lead for the Hoyas. Smart move by Fred Brown. Wingate and that. Nope, that's going to be a block. A block will be on Winston Bennett. Yeah, he almost made a great defensive play, Gary. Had he not reached in, he made a, might have drawn the charge. Foul is charged to number 25. And so Bennett is fouled out of the ball game. That's his fifth personal foul. Doesn't seem possible. He's yep. already fouled out. Well, he's so aggressive and such an outstanding defensive player. Only had two points. Here comes Harden in the ball game. Harden was the point guard before Beal was able to return. Yeah, really in the ball game against Houston. Remember what a great job Harden did coming off that in that second half coming off the bench. You get the offense started again. His job now though is going to be defense, not offense. He started 21 games. Very tough both mentally and physically and did the job until Beal could get that knee back into playing shape. Bill foul shooting becomes important in Georgetown. Really not a great free throw shooting club. This guy is a good one though. He's shooting 73 percent. What I said. Wasn't close on that one. Well, they could cut it to eight here with just two minutes left in the game. Nice move by Peel. This won't go though. Graham with the rebound. Graham has had a game, hasn't he? Graham and Smith. Smith hasn't come back since he had that ankle injury, but nobody seems to miss it. Dickie Beal commits a foul. But that could be very, very important if that ankle is severely uh, injured in regard to Monday night's ballgame. Fourth foul on Beal. He's doing the rooting right now, the captain. Dean Smith was on that team that was against North Carolina in the championship game of the Superdome. And now the King Dome going to get a chance at it again. Only a 68% free throw shooting team. It'd be amazing to have Houston going up against Georgetown. Neither one of them a real good free throw shooting club. Blackman has cut it to eight now. Basketball number 10, James Blackman. Now you got to start falling if you're Kentucky. You can't afford that clock to go down. But Jackson's not one of the guys they want to foul. He's a good free throw shooter. He's an 82 percenter. Well, smart move, of course, by Georgetown is to get the ball in Jackson's hands. If you're Kentucky, maybe double team him, make it go to somebody else, put somebody else on that line. Jackson in a game in the West Regional was 12 of 12 against Nevada, Las Vegas at the line, and 15 of 17 in the tournament. Jackson shooting one and one. There you can see Winston Bennett in the Kentucky bench has been very, very quiet. Boy, they missed two big free throws. They really have. They can cut it to six. And boy has not gotten the roll, and Graham is there again, and the ball ricochets off, and there'll be a foul on Kentucky. And that's all right. If you missed the shot, though, to commit that quick foul. And Graham going the line. If you're Georgetown, you've had on the line the man you wanted, who was Jackson, but he couldn't hit anything. That is the third foul on Bowie. Graham only a 48% free throw shooter. Shot that one in the first half and was a brick. There's something to shoot this poorly and still be in the ball game with 107 left. Sam Bowie out of the ball game. And 107 to go in. in. He has really had. A very great career at Kentucky as a person as well as a player. Consider in the two years he had to sit, not knowing if he'd ever play another game. As you mentioned, Graham, poor free throw shooter, and they missed the third one in a row. This is amazing. 
A lot of openings for Kentucky. They just can't get it to go themselves. Oh, the frustration. Joby Hall just threw his arms up in the air after they missed that last shot. They've had two pretty good shots, and they will not go in there, for it. They have had a chance to make a real run here. They can't get anything to drop. Joe Hall down talking to Sam Bowie. Well, he's going to have to get him in there pretty quick. There's not a lot of time left. 54 seconds. Kind of surprised he's sitting out there. Georgetown has missed three straight front ends of a one and he, one. He's going back in right now. I was surprised he sat down. There they go. Jackson hitting one. Had a little smile from Jackson. So Barrett will come out. Bowie back in. I'm like you. I don't know why they took him out. He suppose he sensed he just ran out of gas for a while. I don't know. I think they had a shot at the and closing that lead down three for 31 is that right that's Jerry? right mike swanson indicates 10 percent from the field so jackson ends that streak of three misses with two straight and it's back to a nine point lead and that's all she wrote they had to change the uh the clock right now trying to put some board uh, put the, the proper score back on the board that's why there's a delay John Thompson is still coaching. He's yelling over there, getting Fred Brown, telling them to get their hands up. There's going to be a foul. And you do not want to foul if you're Georgetown. John Thompson very <laughs> upset with Fred Brown. He's going to talk to him. Foul is charged. Georgetown's number 20. Fred so Brown, Brown committing the fourth personal foul. Ball. Blackman will go to the line. 46 seconds left. A 10-point game. Blackman. Not a good free throw shooter. That would surprise you too because he's a good athlete as he is. Shooting two. Reggie Williams will come in. And Brown. No, nope, that's not the guy to leave. Graham. John Thompson. Now, Graham is getting a standing ovation from the Georgetown fan. He richly deserves it. He has been a man on the board. Played great defensive game against Turpin. Eight points, six rebounds, and three blocks plus intimidation. Uh, funny matchup for Georgetown. They've got Brown on, on uh, Bowie's side. They really ought to have that thing switched around, have Patrick Ewing there. Bowie could get a tap in here. I can miss. You all with the rebound. Reggie Williams. The Wingate. Dunbar to Dunbar. And Georgetown is going to be meeting the Houston Cougars for the national championship. Monday night. Oh, they're swarming defense everywhere. Jackson. And the Williams again. Ewing is there. He has not committed a foul in the second half. And this defense has just been awesome. He has eight points. Kenny Walker missed the shot because Ewing was there in the vicinity. And Brown is fouled with four seconds left in the game. About as awesome display of defense against a quality team as I have ever seen in college basketball. The Kentucky season will come to a close. And it's going to be the Hoyas and Cougars. Keem against Ewing. Well, it's a matchup that everybody has waited for for a long time. Two fellas certainly to be among the premier centers in not only college basketball, but when they move on to the pros, they'll be going for the first time in their careers head to head. championship game two years ago losing to North Carolina this year the opponent will be the Houston Cougars and our 
Chevrolet most valuable player of the game. And what a pleasure it is to award from Georgetown Michael Graham, who put his game together today and was a standout. And for the losing Kentucky Wildcats, the Chevrolet player of the game is Sam Bowie. We'll be back to hear from some of the players and the coaches as we continue now to tell you about Monday night's championship game between Houston and Georgetown. And we will continue in just a moment. Now, standing by. Standing by now with Gary Bender and Billy Packer. I think you can hear these Hoya fans in the background. You know who they're cheering for. Michael Graham over here and Pat Ewing. So let's go over to Gary. Okay. We were asking Pat Ewing, Billy, what John Thompson said had happened. Pat, tell us what. Well, um, he really didn't say anything much. You know, we, we worked so hard to get here. You know, we wasn't ready to give up. So, you know, that we just came out and played hard. Patrick, I thought that the team did a great job when you got in their foul trouble in the first half. They stayed even the entire time you were down on the bench, and then you fellas held the ball at the end of the first half so Kentucky couldn't get the 10-point lead. It put you fellas in pretty good spirits for the second half. Right, you know, we wanted to go down, you know, at least seven down, you know, plus Mike Graham, you know, wrapped down, played an excellent ball game, you know, with, you know, everybody else played so good. They call it the Emerald City, the jewel of the Pacific Northwest, and tonight this picturesque city on Puget Sound is the center of the universe. 